So today we're gonna to be looking at gaming on the new M4 iMac. And yes, this machine can actually play games. So this is the lowest end M4 chip. And despite the fact that we only have eight CPU cores and eight GPU cores, we do have 16 gigabytes of RAM. And there are plenty of native Mac games that you can play that take advantage of all of the hardware of this new M4 chip. And not only that, we can also emulate other console systems as well and play AAA Windows games to translation layers like Crossover. And today I'm gonna to show you what this machine is actually capable of. So the first game that we're looking at is Resident Evil 4 Remake. So this is a natively optimized Apple Silicon Mac game recently released on the App Store and it works fantastically on the iMac M4. So even on the prioritized graphics preset, the game still manages to run really well. In this section of the intro, we're getting about 45 FPS, which isn't too bad. And here I'm testing the game on the balanced graphics preset, which should give a better frame rate. And now we're able to play at over 50 FPS. PS. And it's absolutely amazing that we can play this AAA recently released game on this base level iMac. So next up is Shadow of the Tomb Raider, the latest entry in the Lara Croft puzzle adventure series. Released back in 2019, it's still one of the nicest looking games that you can play on the Mac and it plays beautifully on the M4 iMac as well. Here the frame rate hovers at a respectable 35 to 45 FPS as we're playing in the open areas. And this isn't too bad, so although this is a native Mac game, it still uses an Intel binary that's being translated onto to the ARM64 chip using something called Rosetta. And despite these translation layers at work, it still manages to run beautifully. So make sure to check out Shadow of the Tomb Raider, definitely one of the best games that you can play on an Apple Silicon Mac. Next, we're gonna be taking a look at the game Grid Legends. So there aren't many natively optimized Apple Silicon Mac racing games actually available to play on this platform. And this is one of the few that works pretty well. So here we're playing the game at 1080p at the medium graphics preset. And the frame rate hovers anywhere between 50 to 80 FPS, actually averaging at about 68 FPS at this preset which is pretty much close to the 60 hertz refresh rate of this iMac monitor screen anyway. So the main thing to note is that this version of the game that works on a Mac can only be purchased through the Mac App Store. You can't use the Windows Steam version, but it's definitely worth it for one of the best optimized racing games for the Mac. Next up, we are playing The Sims 4. So this has had a Mac port for a really long time, but it recently became natively optimized for the ARM chip. This means that it can get better frame rates at higher resolutions and also use less power as well. So here we're able to play this game at 4K resolution which is absolutely insane at the ultra graphics preset and we're still getting a very good frame rate 60 to 70 fps which is very respectable this game is completely free to play as well all you got to do is to download the ea desktop app for mac add this game to your account and you can be playing it on your imac right now Next, we are playing the game Farming Simulator 25. Yes, there is a Farming Simulator game and this one just came out and it's natively optimized for the Mac. Here you can live out all of your dreams of being a farmer, drive your John Deere tractor around and then cultivate the soil in your fields. So the game itself is actually quite complex graphically, we're playing the game at 1080p medium and we're getting a respectable 35 to 45 FPS. Not too bad considering how complex this game is. The next game we're looking at is Valheim. So this is a third person crafting survival game which is a little bit different. You play as fallen vikings which have to build shelters, craft tools and fight enemies to survive. The graphics are a little bit different from your typical game. They're low detail with low polygon counts, but the game manages to look beautiful at the same time. Here the iMac is able to play this game at 1080p at about 35 to 55 FPS. Next, we're looking at the game Death Stranding. So this is an absolutely amazing AAA native ARM Mac port, which came out on the Mac App Store early this year. And this is easily one of the most beautifully optimized ports for the Mac. So here we're running the game at 1080p at the very high preset, and we're getting very good frame rates anywhere between 55 to 70 or so FPS. So this is definitely one of the best examples of what is actually possible if you optimize your game for Apple Silicon hardware. This game can run very well, both on the highest end M4 chip, all the way down to the M1 MacBook Air and on smartphone as well. So if you buy this game on the App Store, you get all of these versions included in the same price. So the next game that we're looking at is Minecraft. And here we're running the game through the Prism launcher and we're using a native version of Java in order to run this. So this is the Java version, not the Bedrock version. And we also have installed Fabric, Sodium and Iris. 
and we're getting a very decent frame rate of about 400 FPS in this standard world. Here we're going to be testing out complementary shaders set to the high preset and the graphics in the world look completely different but very much improved. However, the frame rate will tank to about 50 to 65 FPS. I also wanted to test out some other shaders. So this is the Photon Shader Pack. This pack also looks really good where you're running the high preset it makes the clouds look amazing and the water is beautiful as well. But we are getting a slightly lower frame rate of about 45 to 50 FPS. Next up, we're going to be doing something a bit different. We're going to be looking at retro game emulation. In this example, we're going to be using PC SX2, which is a PlayStation 2 emulator. And using this software, we can basically play games from other systems. For example, here's the PlayStation 2 game Shadow of the Colossus. And even though the original game on PlayStation 2 hardware ran at about 20 to 25 FPS, here we're running the game at four times the original resolution at something close to 1440p. And we're easily hitting that locked 60 frames per second. So what's great about emulation is that you can go ahead and use this to play many games which aren't available on the Mac and also relive some of your old childhood memories of gaming at vastly improved frame rates and with the added benefits of things like save states, wireless controller support and lots of other quality of life fixes. If you want to find out how to play PlayStation 2 games like this or games from other consoles like the Nintendo Switch, PlayStation 3 and the Wii U, then make sure to click on the link in the description. Next up, we are going to be looking at Windows gaming on the Mac. So this is a Windows only title, but we're running this through a translation layer called Crossover, which is not only translating DirectX to Metal using D3D Metal, but also has to translate Intel x86-64 to ARM64 and also Windows API calls into macOS API calls. And despite all of these translation layers, the game manages to run remarkably well. So to get a good frame rate, we've turned this on to 1080p to low graphics preset and FSR is set to quality mode. So we're doing a bit of resolution upscaling here in order to get a decent frame rate and we're still able to play very nicely at about 40 to 50 FPS. Now, if you want to play this game yourself on your iMac, then make sure to follow the link in the description for my video tutorial. You need to replace the EXE with an F16C patcher. But once you've done that, then this becomes one of the best games that you can play on the Mac. Next, we're looking at the AAA open world game, Cyberpunk 2077. Again, this is the Windows version of the game being translated via crossover. This is definitely one of the hardest games to play on an Apple Silicon Mac because it's not designed for it. However, there is going to be a Mac port coming out in early 2025, which is very cool. But for now, you can play the game on a Mac using crossover. And here we're running at 1080p at the medium graphics preset, getting about 25 to 30 FPS. So trying to get a better frame rate, I've turned down the graphics setting to low. This is now a lot more responsive. We're getting about 35 to 38 FPS, making this game a lot more playable. And it's really cool to see the iMac capable of playing games like this, even though it is at a relatively low frame rate. Hopefully this will get a lot better once the native version of Cyberpunk comes out on Mac early next year. Next, we're looking at the game Diablo 4. So this recently came out with an expansion pack, Vessel of Hatred. And although the Diablo series historically was released on a Mac in the past, the latest entry in the series Diablo 4 is Windows only. So we have to run this through the crossover translation layer. And thankfully it still works pretty well. Here we're playing at 1080p on the medium graphics preset and FSR is set to balanced. This means that we're upscaling quite a lot in order to get playable frame rates. And even in large hordes of enemies, we're getting about 45 to 55 FPS. Still very much a playable game on this M4 iMac. So next title again is a Windows port, Final Fantasy VII Remake. And despite this game basically being a PlayStation 4 console port ported to Windows and then being played on the Mac, it still looks absolutely visually stunning. And it's not just the in-game real-time cutscenes that look great. Exploration and combat also performed very well even on this base level iMac M4. Here we're playing the game at 1080p on the low graphics preset and although there are a few stutters here and there it's still a very smooth experience. So the last game we're looking at is Black Myth Wukong, a very recently released AAA title coming out of China and definitely the most demanding game on this list. Here we've had to pull down the settings to 1080p low and I put the FSR scaling to 33% so this is probably the equivalent to ultra performance mode. Really blurring down what was originally stunning graphics now being massively upscaled using FSR technology in order to make a playable frame rate. So despite all of these graphics settings turned down, we're still only getting about 30 to 40 FPS. So I reckon that this is still enough to enjoy this game, although it isn't good enough to give me any advantage to defeating any of these very fiendishly difficult bosses. But it's good to see that the lowest end M4 chip can still make this game playable on the Mac. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. This concludes my M4 chip series benchmarks. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.